Hey everybody, Scott Tetweiler here, and we're back with another episode of Couch to Photoshop. So in this specific instance, uh, I've kind of come up with a little bit of out of order because I've received a request to make one of my images into a black and white. Uh, so like most photographers, I guard my images. Uh, their, their color tone, their look, their feel is something I have determined I want. There's a mood to this image. It has a very kind of nostalgic feel to it from the color palette I've chosen, and someone wants a black and white. That's fine. I'll convert it to black and white, but we're not going to do it with some sort of quick filter. There's a lot to black and white conversion. So today I want to go over several methods of black and white conversion, the traps you can fall into when you do the black and white conversion, and what I think is the best or most optimal way to do it. Albeit there's a lot of subjectivity there, but really there's some traps as well, and that's what I want to cover. So first and foremost, let's talk about some of the traps in Photoshop. And the biggest one is going to be the method most people will assume is a quick and dirty black and white conversion. And that would be to go and grab a hue and saturation adjustment layer from our hue and saturation palette down here. And simply grab the saturation slider and pull it all the way over. And ta-da, we're done. We now have a black and white conversion and isn't it beautiful? However, there are a lot of problems with this. Uh, first of all, we can't adjust anything in it. It's done. Uh, so if I want the sky darker or other things like that, I really can't affect that from this, uh, this palette. Uh, but there's a bigger, more devious thing going on here I want to share. So I'm just going to reset that palette and I'm going to go and uh, create a layer underneath this hue and saturation. So when we go back to hue and saturation, hue and saturation layer, it will adjust uh, everything we've done. So I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush and I've picked uh, just a pink here. Uh, it's 100% saturated color. It really doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to draw that right here. There's a big blob. I'll uh, pick another one. Uh, let's pick a lovely blue color here. And we'll do one more. We'll do a lovely yellow. And these are on a separate layer. I'm going to hit V, which is my move tool up here, but we don't touch that. Remember, we try and use our keys if we can. So V is in Victor, it is your move tool. Uh, so these are in a separate layer. All right, so let's go back to our hue and saturation adjustment layer. So if I were to say to you, which one of these is the lightest color? So given that this hue and saturation palette is going to make decisions for us, you're probably going to say, well, the yellow one is by far and away the lightest color. Or maybe it's the pink. I'm torn. But blue is definitely the darkest color here. And I think we'd all agree that is true. However, when you grab the hue and saturation adjustment slider and pull saturation down, you'll find they are all the same color. This is one of the traps in Photoshop, is that this color model used by the hue and saturation adjustment tool is a little bit different than a lot of the other color models used in Photoshop. And it looks simply at the saturation value, and we saw that when we picked our colors, that's what this S means right here, these are 100% saturation. So it doesn't matter what you pick, all these colors are going to be the same gray when we use this method of black and white conversion. So this is not going to fly. So we're not going to use that for this. Now, one of the ways, if you need a super fast way to can make a black and white conversion and you want it to be technical. And what I mean by technical is a color is made up of three things. It's made up of, v, of a value. That's it's black or white or gray in the middle. Um, it's color. Is it red? Is it purple? Is it yellow? And it's saturation. How much purple? How much yellow? And what we want to do is have a document that is only the value, not the color and not, or not the hue and not the saturation. So how do we get that? And by the way, that's something you'll use from time to time. So knowing how to get a very valid value document is important. The quickest way uh, I feel is to go just create a solid color adjustment and pick a gray and just pull it all the way to the side here. This is your grays. doesn't really matter which one you pick. And then I go and change the blending mode. And we're going to have a whole blending mode uh, episode here. I actually wanted to do it uh, for today, but this popped up uh, as an immediate need. So I thought I would work, work through it. And you can see that now these colors kind of show up as we think they should. The blue should be darker than the yellow. And the pink is probably a little bit darker than the yellow. So this looks good. And this is a, uh, this is not, subjective this is the value document or the the values of this so if you're a an artist and you draw with a color pencil or you use uh, chalk or things along that lines value documents are a huge part of your training as an artist you start here before you learn color you always draw in black and white because learning value is really very important to great art and I think as photographers, we often aren't taught that. That's why I'm very big fan of everyone taking a painting class or a couple drawing classes. Even if your pictures come out a little twisted, 
you're going to learn a lot that will improve your photography. So the same problem exists with this method though, is I have no method of adjusting this black and white. It's, it is what it is and that's fine, but as an artist, any, any monkey can do this. Uh, so all I need to do is, is I'm going to get rid of both of those layers. So I'm going to hold control and select both and drag them into the trash. So how, how would you convert this to black and white? The way I would do it is use the black and white adjustment layer. And it will go ahead and create pretty darn close to the same as the value document we just had, but it has made some minor adjustments here. And you can click the auto button, which is kind of what it does, but you can go and choose also presets in here, uh, which I don't tend to use. Uh, what I want to do is grab each one and wiggle it. So I just grab the red and go to both sides and just kind of play with it and say, mm, no, I like, I like that and yellow the same thing and what we want to do is we don't want to do real wild swings and i'll show you why uh, if we do let's say the green one if we pulled green all the way over you see we get kind of a weird edge that wasn't there before uh, so sometimes so either direction here i'm creating these weird artifact edges which will show up when you print by the way uh, so i tend to want to kind of live in the middle but I, there's a lot of leeway here in the middle so i like these a little bit brighter Cyan, same thing. Cyan's all the sky uh, behind her. And if I go too dark again, a lot of the artifacting or grain in the sky that I used here will start to show up. Uh, and uh, I don't really like this flat document, so I'm going to kind of live in the middle. Same with the blue. And I want to watch her back here. I don't want to lose detail in her back, but at the same point, I kind of like the darkness up here. But uh, something like this. And then the magenta, which is her hair. Reflection of her hair on her back, which is why you see her back's affected there. And, of course, a little bit of the red in her skin. Um, I don't want to go too far again because it's going to create blotchiness in her legs uh, because it's artificially uh, enhancing that. And I kind of like it on the bright side anyway. So there we go. That's a better black and white conversion. But we're not done yet. We have a couple other tools, uh, and I'll show you the easy ones first. Uh, they, probably the, the simplest one. Um, that you're going to run into is the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Again, these are not causing us any heartache in the original image. We can turn them on and off and we haven't lost anything. So the brightness and contrast layer does exactly what you think it does. It either makes the image brighter or darker. So the difference between brightness and exposure is actually pretty interesting. Exposure raises or lowers everything in a document. Brightness Kind of think of it as it picks and chooses. It lowers, um, it makes things darker that, that are not super bright. Uh, so super bright objects don't change as much as, as darker objects. So you can see as we lower this, uh, the sky, which was already in the middle, gets darker faster than her legs, which were a little bit brighter. Um, so it's kind of like, a, it works very similar to the vibrance if you're used to uh, Lightroom at all. Uh, it's very similar to that in the way it behaves. So I want to pick something that I like I just like, and I'm looking at the difference between her, her leg and the sky here. I don't want something like this, um, and I don't want something like this. I'm trying to find something that I like that just kind of, it's pleasing to me. And then contrast is the difference between the brightest and the darkest in the document. And uh, this is, again, one of those games you'll play until you find something you like. And I think I like that. So it took us two adjustment layers to get to the black and white conversion of this that I felt that I liked. Now, a lot of people are fans of vignettes around the outsides of images, and I actually don't care for vignettes. Uh, I, from a physics standpoint, which is where I was went to school, in optics and lenses, vignettes show a uh, an error in the conversion of that image to a, an emulsion or a film, and that black edge is caused by errors in your lens or errors in the tube or the medium it transfers through, and it just gets it gets yucky, and it shows to me that I have a cheap lens. So I don't tend to like it, and if you're using it as a method to draw the eye into the middle of the document, I think you might need to go back and look at the composition of your image and say, why isn't the eye automatically drawn into the middle of the image? Why do I need this artificial muddiness around the outside? Uh, so just going there, I'm going to say that. But let's say, for example, that you did want to do that. You wanted a vignette. Okay, that's fine. There's a bunch of ways to make a vignette. Uh, probably the simplest way would be to just, let's just use a tool we already know, our brightness and contrast, to just lower the brightness a bit. And then go back to our mask, which we learned about. Oops, that was fun. I double-clicked on it. Go back to our mask here. 
In inverted, control I, we learned that last time. B for brush, make it big and make it kind of soft. And I'm actually gonna lower the flow. So the amount of ink dropped by this will depend on how long I stay in one place. So I'm just gonna click and I'm just gonna start to wiggle my, my mouse around the outside. But remember we gotta paint with white on a mask for it to show up. Uh, so I'm just gonna do this. And it's not gonna look like it's changing much because it's not dropping a lot of, of um, pigment at once. It's going over time. And I'm just kind of darkening the edge. If this isn't fast enough for you, you can always increase the flow, but I like a slow flow because I can work slower and take my time and make it the way that I want it. But again, we are using a mask, so if we get it done like this and we don't like it, we can hit X on the keyboard and go back and paint with some white and make it what we want. So if that's what you what you like, then you could run with that. Um, I'm gonna actually admit that maybe I do like this. The thing I don't like about vignettes typically is when they go over lighter parts of the uh, image, they look muddy to me. So I might actually go back and clear some of that. I'm just clicking and, and making little adjustments here uh, to remove it from uh, those parts of the clouds. And I'm making my brush bigger because I think I can see where the edge kind of starts and stops and that's bothering me. Something like that, maybe. So if we turn this on and off. That's the vignette we have added. Now, because it is a separate layer, we can go back and, and adjust the opacity of that if it's too much. And you see, we're pretty, we don't have a whole lot of vignette here. So yeah, I guess I just don't like it. it in my mind, I, I don't care for it. The other thing the vignettes tend to do is they tend to add banding to an image. Uh, and banding looks horrible when it's printed. Um, you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see here on YouTube, but you see there's some 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 bands in through here. And if we turn this vignette layer off, those all go away. So uh, that's one of the reasons I don't like a vignette. Uh, another, just another reason. Uh, to get rid of banding, we would have to add noise to the image. And uh, now we've got a whole separate problem to deal with. So uh, I think I like it without the vignette. So I'm just gonna take the vignette away. And there you go. That is our black and white conversion uh, from here to there and how I got there using the black and white adjustment layer and the brightness and contrast. Now there are a lot of other ways to do this. You can use curves to do it, uh, but I'm trying to teach you Photoshop from the beginning and get you off the couch to use it without scaring you. Now, a lot of what we just did here with this can be done in Lightroom. So if you're a Lightroom or a Capture One user, both of those raw converters do have a very similar panel to this and you can certainly use it. That is uh, actually probably a better solution because you're still dealing with raw data and you're not already in a JPEG or TIFF situation like we are here. So if this is the only tool you plan to use, I will tell you, you can probably just get away with it in Lightroom and capture one and probably get a better result uh, than coming to Photoshop first. So we've converted from a raw to a document and now we're modifying it. Um, so that is not as good. You always wanna work in raw if you can first before you come in here to make any major shifts. So things like exposure need to be changed before you arrive in Photoshop. Um, because if you have blown out areas, you cannot fix blown out areas in Photoshop. You can fix them in Camera Raw. Uh, so I am getting a bit off topic there, but we're talking about Photoshop. If you don't use Capture One, you don't use Lightroom, and you just wanna make a black and white conversion, this is how you can do it. It's one method. But just be aware of that hue and saturation adjustment layer and the, um, the little bit of evil that lies in there with its color model versus uh, other areas of Photoshop. So I, I hope that was helpful. I know it was a long road to get there, but black and white conversion is something that's, uh, I think, a little more um, emotional than people give it credit for. There's a lot of, of as I say, emotion to me when I create the color palette for an image and I'm like, this is the mood I want. It's exactly the image I want. And someone says, hey, can I just make that a black and white? And I'm like, no, you can't just make it a black and white. There's other work to be done. And if you go to Instagram and you pick a black and white filter, you see there's probably three or four different ones and each one is a completely different mood. And I'm not gonna let a client pick randomly one that they like because now they're representing my photography with a filter and uh, we don't play that game. I'm not a commodity photographer and I don't think you should be either. Your stuff should be unique to you. And this black and white conversion is the one that I think probably fits this best. Now, if I wanted to, I can start over and uh, hide these and see if I get a closer, um, get the same result. And I actually did this a couple times and this, this I'm tending a little in the same area here. Don't like the vignettes. I just, it's not my game, but some people love them. It's all good. 
but it's just tools for you and now you know how to use them a bit better. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Again, if you liked this video and you found it helpful, only one in a hundred people bother to click the like button. It would mean a lot to me if you would take the time to do so. And uh, as I say, let me know below what you would like to see next. I think we're going to work on uh, blending modes a bit because I really wanted to get to that today. And uh, unfortunately, this kind of popped up as an immediate need. And I felt the kind of uh, the need to demonstrate why I don't let people randomly convert my work to black and white. So I will catch you next time.